American Atheists coverage of the San Francisco 5th Annual Atheist Film Festival, next on the Atheist Viewpoint. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Atheist Viewpoint. I'm your host, Dave Moscato, Public Relations Director for American Atheists. On this week's episode, we'll be talking about the fifth annual Atheist Film Festival in San Francisco, California, at which American Atheists presented the first ever Evolve Award for Excellence in a Documentary for the Revisionaries to Scott Thurman, the director. We'll be looking at some clips of interviews that I did with the various directors from the film festival. I hope you enjoy this episode. My first interview was with the founder and co-organizer of the Atheist Film Festival, David Fitzgerald. Let's do it. This is Dave Moscato with the Atheist Viewpoint. I have here David Fitzgerald, who is one of the co-founders of the uh, Atheist Film Festival. We're here in San Francisco. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about the film festival? Yeah, this is our fifth year. Um, it's the world's first and oldest atheist film festival. Uh, it's not the only one, interesting enough. There's a Free Thought Film Festival and uh, other film festivals of the type, but this is the first one that started all just five years ago. Great. So how did you get the idea for it? Uh, it was kind of interesting. There was a guy named Hank Pelliser, a.k.a. Hank Hyena, and he's like a Johnny Appleseed of indie film festivals. And he gave us a call one time at SF Atheist and said, hey, you know, I'm an atheist and I've done all these other film festivals, but I've never done an atheist film festival. Mm -hmm. Would you guys be interested in doing that? And I said, brother, I've got a whole list right here of the film <laughs> that we want to show at that film festival. And two months later, we had put together the first one. And it's just been growing ever since. Great. So uh, why is it important to have a film festival just for atheist films? Well, I like to call it heretic-friendly films. Okay. It's not so much that it's just uh, atheist, but what it is, it's, it's films that atheists can appreciate, and especially films that show uh, atheist perspectives on things, and portray fictional characters who are atheists in a more realistic way than you get from Hollywood, where they're like killjoys, or villains, or, or just general uh, straw men figures that get their comeuppance at the end and have a come to Jesus moment, you know. Um, we want to show what atheists are really like. And it's a great celebration of being atheist. Sounds wonderful. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about some of the films that you have this year? Yeah, we're very proud to have the world premiere of a movie uh, called Hug an Atheist, which if you've got Christian friends out there who don't know anything about what atheism is or they think you're devil worship or something, this is going to be a great icebreaker for what atheists really feel and like and do and what they're like in America. That's one of them. We've also got another film called Kumari, which is an amazing film. It's it's so unbelievable, it could only be a true story. Mm -hmm. um, it's a documentary that feels like a feature film about an Indian American who goes back to India, sees the guru culture and says, you know what, I think I could do that. I think I could do a better job of it. And so it's the true story of a fake guru who gets a real audience and the impact that he has on them. It's just, a, a, on paper, it doesn't sound like that much. It's an unbelievable film, it's fantastic. We've also got The Revisionaries, which talks about the Texas School Board and how creationists are blatantly trying to water down science standards uh, to fit young earth creationism in it. And we've also got some movies that, uh, when they first came out in theaters, they didn't have a wide distribution, and so a lot of people didn't get a chance to see them on the big screen. It's movies like uh, The Magdalene Sisters, uh, Irish movie about 
young Irish women who were forced into this system, the Magdalene Asylums, and basically without trial or any kind of uh, wrongdoing, became slaves for life at these these laundries in Ireland. True story. Um, we've also got a biopic of Charles Darwin called mm. Creation. Um, and we've got other movies here. It's just a real full lineup from uh, noon to midnight tomorrow. And uh, we're just really knocked out by the, the the lineup we've got this year. Great. And it's at the Roxy Theater, is that right? The Roxy Theater, historic Roxy Theater. It's the oldest theater in San Francisco. And um, it's going to be tomorrow, sep uh, Saturday, September 14th from noon to midnight. Sounds great. Thanks for talking to me. I really appreciate it. Uh, this has been David Fitzgerald. You're watching Atheist Viewpoint. Thanks, Dave. I hope you enjoyed that. My next interview was with Sylvia Brooks, who is the director of Hug an Atheist. This is Dave Moscato with American Atheist. You're watching The Atheist Viewpoint. I have Sylvia Brooks here with me. We're at the Atheist Film Festival in San Francisco, California. And uh, we're going to be talking about her film, Hug an Atheist. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what the film is. It's a film about how atheists, everyday atheists, so not the famous atheists, everyday regular atheists go through life um, dealing with things where a lot of people deal with religion. Go, well, they would turn to religion. This is how atheists deal with these things. Like, um, how do we deal with grief? Do we still get, why do, would we want to get married? How do we raise our children? And how do we have some sense of morality? All those kinds of things. Or how do we find meaning in life without God? So things where usually people go to religion, those things. So how, what did you find out? How do atheists find a meaning in life without God? Well, they find meaning, they, they define the meaning by themselves. Mm -hmm. um, your life is meaningful to you. I mean, the universe might not care about you. Well, the universe doesn't care about you, mm -hmm. but you care about each other and you find meaning in the work that you do and in the connections that you have with other people. And so, yeah. There's lots of meaning to, to me and to you. And Great. So, uh, wh where did you come up with the title, Hug an Atheist? I wanted something upbeat, something that people could relate to. Mm -hmm. Something. So, I, because the film presents atheists, um, puts a human face on atheism. Mm -hmm. so it's. It could be your next door neighbor or your colleague at work that is an atheist and you know those people already and you know you like those people already and you might not know that they're an atheist and hug an atheist seemed like a way of accepting atheism. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're from Belgium I understand, you live in England now. Yes. So what, what is the, the major difference that you see? Earlier tonight you were talking about how uh, in Europe it's just kind of assumed that you're an atheist and uh, it, it's unusual to, to come across somebody who isn't. Um, so tell me a little bit about what, what you notice and, and what it's like to come to this country. Well, it's, it just was very surprising to me that if you say you're an atheist you get kind of weird looks from people or that they all of a sudden will kind of shut you out. And then when I started reading articles um, that friends would share about things about atheism in this country, it just seemed so alien to me, especially a country that's founded on freedom of religion and to escape religious persecution, all those things, and that you would treat atheists or people of a different religion the way you do. Um, it just seems so alien to me and that's why I wanted to do something that maybe can help somehow to make atheists more approachable. Great, that sounds wonderful. So if somebody wants to watch this, uh, how can they go about doing that? Well, at the moment you can order, well, pre-order the DVDs or a Blu-ray on the website. Um, we're also going to make it available as a pay-per-view thing online uh, as well. And lots of um, local atheist associations and humanist groups have already been in touch to ask, like, can we show the film in our group? So if you've got one of those, maybe ask your group leader to see if they can get in touch. And that's kind of the way we're trying to distribute at this moment in time. Great. What's your website? It's hugganatheist.org. Uh, hugganatheist.org. Okay. Uh, th we've been talking with Sylvia Brooks. Uh, thanks very much for joining me today.
The interview you're about to see was with Sophia Winkler, the reporter featured in Sophia Investigates the Good News Club by director Scott Burdick. This is Dave Moscato. You're watching Atheist Viewpoint. I'm here with Sophia Winkler, and uh, she's going to tell us a little bit about the movie uh, Sophia Investigates the Good News Club, yeah. which is a documentary that they're showing here at the Atheist Film Festival, the fifth annual one. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about it. Um, well, originally, we are, uh, we're part of Triangle Free Thought Society, which is our local secular group in North Carolina. So um, we heard that the Good News Club was going to come to North Carolina and they were having a big uh, spectacular event is what they were calling it. So we heard that they were going to be there. We really wanted to see exactly what they were telling kids. They go into public schools and teach them all these fundamentalist ways and it's very scary but it's completely legal from their viewpoint. So. Um, we went in and my great grandmother was a leader in the Good News Clubs um, when in the 60s and 70s. So we had some background on it, but we weren't exactly sure what was going to be happening. Um, so we had video cameras and we had lots of questions for them. And it, they said we were undercover, but really they never asked us who we were with. They just assumed we were Christians and we, I mean, we were very nice and they were very nice back to us. So. Um, I mean, we really just talked to all the children and the parents, all the volunteers and the people in charge who were there and um, really just found out what was going on. So uh, you said this was going on in public schools. Were they renting space? Was this an after-school activity or, or how did this come about in a public school? It's um, an after-school club that they're having and so it is always in the school even when they have options to have it outside of school or across the street from schools in some uh, instances. Um, they always want to have it in the school because it is important to them that it's in an environment where children are used to being taught facts. So the children really can't differentiate what the religion they're being taught is versus the math and the science that they're being taught. So it's in all 50 states and 185 countries around the world and very much growing and uh, it's completely legal as of 2001 when there was a court ruling saying that they could do this and schools had no say in whether they were there or not. That's pretty scary. Yeah, I think it was um, Sweden. There was some country that outlawed uh, advertising on television shows aimed at children because yeah. studies show that they couldn't differentiate between actual programming and advertising. So tell me a little bit about your role in this project. Well, um, I was definitely going in because I'm uh, in high school. They definitely, they were more trustworthy. And um, I mean, we were very friendly with them and they were very nice back. Um, I know a lot of people who have seen the film are surprised by the fact that it wasn't a hostile environment at all towards us. Um, it was only kind of hostile afterwards when they saw the film, they realized who we were and who we were with and that they probably shouldn't have let us in. But um, they, um, so yeah, I mean, I was asking the questions and talking to them and um, we just, I mean, yeah, we had just a few questions prepared beforehand and it was very casual, just a conversation with them and they were very open to talk about who they were and what they were teaching children and their tactics for getting this point across. So I understand Catherine Stewart makes an appearance in the film as well. Mm -hmm. um, Catherine was uh, a, one of the speakers at the 50th anniversary uh, annual convention for American Atheists. Mm -hmm. So she wrote a book uh, about the Good News Club. Can you tell me a little bit about that and, and her involvement with the film? Well, um, she did write a book about the Good News Club and she also has some experiences with the Good News Club trying to come into her daughter's school. Okay. So um, it's definitely, she's speaking from a personal viewpoint, which is really important in the film. Um, so in the film, we, um, she's interviewed, but she wasn't there that day at the Spectacular. So she's very important for getting background and really understanding what they're doing because the Spectacular event was not in a public school. It was at the North Carolina fairgrounds, so it was, Catherine really explains what's going on in schools and how that's important to the parents and the children involved. Great. Um, so if somebody wants to watch this, uh, how can they do that? Um, it's on YouTube. It's only 40 minutes or so. Um, they can look up Sophia Investigates the Good News Club and it's their full length. And there are also several websites. Um, Catherine has a domain and so does um, Scott Burdick, the filmmaker, I believe, who did this. Okay, great. Um, this is uh, Sophia Winkler. We're watching the Atheist Viewpoint here. Thanks for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This clip is of the first ever presentation of the American Atheists Evolve Awards to Scott Thurman, the director of The Revisionaries, for excellence in a documentary.
Evolve Awards are a wonderful project that American Atheist is going to be doing annually from now on uh, for presentations that show atheists in a good light, a positive light, as opposed to the more uh, villainous type of portrayals that are usually done in, in Hollywood type settings. So uh, in this clip you'll see the presentation of that award. Sponsor, one of them, uh, their public relations director, Dave Moscato, to come up here to have a few words with you. Hi, everybody. So, uh, the reason that I'm up here is uh, I wanted to present something here to Scott. We are starting for the first time something called the Evolve Awards. Uh, the point of the awards is to basically recognize filmmakers and bloggers and musicians and other groups. There are seven categories altogether. Uh, for portraying atheism and skepticism and scientific inquiry and rationalism in a positive light, so often we were just talking about this last night actually, uh, in Hollywood you see atheists portrayed as the villain and that's obviously not an inaccurate portrayal. And so this movie really shows atheists and, and skeptics as heroes. And that's something that we are really proud of and that we wanted to recognize. So uh, this is, like I was saying, the first annual one. We're going to be adding on more of these uh, every year. We're actually opening up nominations here for 2014 pretty shortly. But the first ever Evolve Award for American Atheist, I'm presenting here for excellence in a documentary to Scott Thurman, the director of the <laughs> Darwin's little diagram there that he, he wrote in his journal, um, I guess when he was taking some notes. I love that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And this clip is my interview with Scott Thurman, the director of The Revisionaries. This is Dave Moscato. You're watching The Atheist Viewpoint. I have with me here Scott Thurman. We're at the uh, San Francisco. This is the fifth annual uh, Atheist Film Festival. We're going to be talking about his film. Uh, tell me a little bit about it. So uh, I did a documentary, and I'll let you hold the, the mic. I did a documentary on the State Board of Education in Texas, and it's about their standards review process, standards for the entire state for public schools in Texas. Uh, but these standards go on to affect the textbooks that not only get distributed in Texas, but often get distributed throughout the nation. So a lot of people throughout the nation are concerned over what this Texas Board of Education is, is setting um, in their state. So. And, and so what are they setting? Why is this an issue? Um, so why it's an issue is because there are several members on the State Board of Education in the past and even currently that have very far right, religious right um, beliefs that um, many are arguing are that they're trying to put into the standards. And so when you deal with science, you're talking about creationism, uh, sort of anti-evolution um, language that's introduced by these religious right board members during the standards review process. When you're looking at history and social studies, um, you're, uh, we dealt with issues of separation of church and state. Um, Thomas Jefferson and others were sort of um, uh, not attacked, but um, withdrawn from certain standards for their sort of political philosophies. And so uh, how long are these standards going to stay in place? Um, so the Texas Board of Education um, voted in 2009 for the science standards. They stay in place for 10 years. Okay. Um, and the textbook process is about to start actually next week. They're going to be reviewing textbooks, science textbooks, and these textbooks have to meet the standards that they set a couple years back. So now we're going to see the textbook review process for science books and then history books will follow. And then around 2020 we're going to see uh, uh, the standards, the science standards, and other history standards review process again. So it's a every about every decade that they they look at these. Yeah, it's a, it's a very important issue. It affects a lot of people. So how did you get interested in making this film? I was interested in science education. I felt that um, many people, especially when you look at it politically, science is. Um, I don't think understood by the general public, specifically evolution. Um, people don't see evolution as a fact and, and mostly it's the people that have like religious um, leanings that they're opposed to evolution for its philosophical implications. Mm -hmm. 
And so I was interested in science education, not just the sort of facts and figures of science, but the scientific process. In a way, we go from not knowing about something to understanding aspects of our natural world. Um, and sort of that process, for me, is, is a way of life that you can apply to things throughout your life. It's not just these cold, hard facts and science. They're things that we can live with on a day-to-day -day basis that improve our lives and have already improved our, our lives right now. So, uh, yeah, I was, I was interested in science education. And that led m me to the Board of Education and Don McElroy. And Don invited me into his home, into his office. Is a very sort of good sport about it all, and so although I disagree with Don a great deal in terms of his political philosophy, I um, I really like the guy on a personal level, and appreciate um, what he, the amount of access he did he gave us, and with that added access was the um, sort of increased. Um, a responsibility on my part to treat him fairly and um, I hope that I've done that um, and I wanted to humanize him and all characters that might be considered the villains or you know uh, just everybody in the film I wanted to create a sort of even-handed look at them so that we're looking at the political issues and we're not demonizing people um, because you know people can do good or bad and let's hope that we can be nice about it and have conversations about it and understand each other better to where we're all doing good in the light of it, uh, everyone else. I guess that's a little grandiose or optimistic, but um, that's my perspective. I, I think he'll come around. I think they'll come around eventually. That's great, and I think you've succeeded very well in doing that. In fact, um, this is the winner of the first ever Evolve Award from American Atheists. Uh, we're really glad to have you be part of this. So if somebody wants to watch this, uh, how can they go about doing that? Well, um, right now they can see it on Netflix. You can watch it um, online through there, but it's also, it was just released um, on video on demand, so several sites, including iTunes, people can check it out online, and um, uh, it's out on DVD. You can purchase a DVD from our website. Um, um, and uh, check it out from that way as well. And what's your website? Uh, TheRevisionariesMovie.com Okay. We've been talking with Scott Thurman, director of The Revisionaries, at the 5th Annual Atheist Film Festival in San Francisco, California. You're watching The Atheist Viewpoint. Thanks, Scott. Thank it was really great having you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. That's it for this week's episode of The Atheist Viewpoint. I hope you enjoyed these interviews. We'll see you again next week on The Atheist Viewpoint, where reason reigns and reality rules.
you ask if I'm happy? Yes, I am. I think for myself. I've learned to stand. Kneel if you want. I don't give a damn. But I'm not praying anymore. Can't you get free from the jail inside? You sold your own mind for a place to hide. Break your slave chains and cast them aside. Freedom's knocking at your door. Yourself, your disdain life, and you're scared of hell. They've indoctrinated you quite well, but we're not falling anymore. 